specifically because reptiles are cold-blooded. They don't have an internal mechanism to maintain their body temperature. So they use outside sources like the sun and the water to heat and cool themselves. So they built the platforms out there as sunning boards for the gators and the turtles to climb up on to get some sun when they need it. It helps keep the gators off the pathways and of course gives us a great look at them when they are on them. Got a couple of ducks hanging out there on that one. Though we probably are not going to have too much luck spotting gators on the platforms uh, really this time of the year in general because it's, because it's so hot. They'll usually tend to stay in the water to stay cool, but hopefully we'll spot a couple in the water as we go through. Ooh, matter of fact, I see one right now. Left side, just right behind this cypress tree trunk, just about three or four feet off the edge of the bank. You can just see the top of the head. It's moving out a little bit further now, moving slowly. You can see the top of the head of the small gator there. Can't see the body or tail. But the tail of an alligator will always See pick it? up at least yeah. half its length, a lot of times a little bit over half. And they'll use those tails to propel themselves through the water, unless they're main from the pool. And you will typically see alligators move very quick that often. But large adult alligators with long, powerful tails hit speed swimming up to about 20 miles per hour. So, you know, unless your name is Michael Phelps. I wouldn't recommend trying to ever outswim one, or at least an adult anyway. And we'll have another gator. This one will actually be even closer if it doesn't go under on us. Right beside us here on the left, it's about maybe uh, two feet off the edge of the bank. Right beside us here on the left side. If you want to point out, past the tree is right. Just hanging out on that wooden platform. See that little head right by the tree? See the string? Yeah. And they can do some large. They can do about size of a basketball. And in captivity, those turtles can live to be like 30 plus years old. I don't know why. They might be out there. 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 But there's another one, Martha. See it? That's far enough. It'll fall off. Joe, get up and sit down. I'm not going to tell you again. You're going to sit down. The alligators, they'll grow about a foot every year for the first like five years they're alive. Much like a small child will grow quickly until they're an adult. They'll grow about five years You can go right there to Martha's leg and no further. The edge of the bank here on the left, about maybe eight feet off the bank there. You can see the back of the head. Yeah, they'll grow after those first five years, but at a much slower rate. I'm going to bust you. Normally, female gators, fully grown, can get up to be around nine to sometimes ten feet long. Weigh anywhere from 300 to 500 pounds. So male gators can get larger. They can get up to around 13, 14 feet. And weigh anywhere from like 500 to 800 pounds or possibly even more. Here's another small gator on the left. About three feet off the back. But there are records of male gators getting over 15 feet, though. Uh, there was one they caught in Alabama and several years ago now, but still one of the larger gators caught in the last decade. That's on record, anyway. They clocked in at 15 feet, 9 inches. They're everywhere. Oh, right there, it's another baby. You see it? It is kind of rare to see one get that big. Alligators everywhere. So it can and has happened. There's a small gator right off the edge of the bay here on the left. We got bunch of them. He's like paddling. I get the question a lot. The difference between alligators and crocodiles quite a few differences. Uh, one, you won't find any crocodiles in South Carolina. They're going to let you a tropical one. climate. Yeah, Actually, the only uh -huh. crocodiles you're going to find in the United States at all are in the southern tip of Florida. And that's the American crocodile, which is pretty similar in size and weight to the American alligator. But when you're talking about most species of crocodiles, especially like saltwater crocs, 
or like uh, Nile crocodiles in Africa, you're talking about much larger reptiles. And you can get up to like 18, 19, sometimes 20 feet long and weigh a good bit more. that many babies, there's probably a mom nearby. Oh, yeah. The mouth is different too. The mouth of an alligator is much more rounded than that of a crocodile. The crocodile mouth is very kind of sharp and pointed, almost like a triangle. Also, a good cell cell sign. I'm going to get up there. You're going to stay right there. Couple of acres in the back corner tree there. I wanted to get one of those egret feathers because I saw them back there. Oh. So yeah, that's Ravenswood. Of course, you know, anywhere that we go on the tram, you can walk as well. So if you did want to walk back around this area later, you could certainly feel free to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 press on through for now, though. We do have more to see on the tour. We're going to be coming around to the old slave quarters here in just a moment. Now I am going to give you all some information on these old slave cabins as we get up to the front here. I do always recommend though that if you wanted a lot more additional information on the slave history here at Magnolia, Taken the Slavery to Freedom Tour, which dedicates the whole tour to that subject, and that'll bring you out to the cabins, and the guide will give you much more information on these and on the slave history. And of course, with that tour, you'll get to go inside these old cabins, and all four of these you'll see along this line were built in the 1850s. These are quite old, and certainly. The enslaved did live in these specific cabins in the 1850s and early 1860s before the end of the Civil War. And I'll tell you more about these. They're actually giving a tour of the corner, though, so I'm going to be quiet as we go past the tour group, so I don't interrupt them too much. But I'll tell you a little bit more about these once we get up past this group. Give me just a moment. Hi, these cabins were built in the 1850s so quite old and you notice going through here two doors per cabin and there would have been two slave families living in each cabin sharing one one family living on one side one on the other and depending on the size of each family you were talking roughly between about 10 to 15 slaves per cabin so it was pretty tight quarters you can see these are not that large now the smaller building on the end, that's the old gardener's cottage. That was built in the early 1900s after the plantation was converted into the gardens. Now we got another large Virginia live oak tree beside us here. This one's over 300 years old and one of our larger ones on the ground. And that wood, live oak wood, that was a favorite for ship builders to use when they were making ships out of wood. It's hard to work with because it was so tough and very heavy, but if you had a ship, we had a live oak back in the day. It was pretty much top of the line. No live wood going to be tougher than that. And they got the name live oak because, unlike other oak trees, live oaks are evergreen. They don't lose their leaves in the winter. Most other oak trees are deciduous. They will lose their leaves in the winter. The live oaks do not. They are alive year-round. You'll see a whole line. 